I'm just gonna roll some B-rolls, so don't right. say anything bad about anybody, okay? Perfect. try this and, and uh, see how it works. 70 years. This is the birthday celebration. I'm here, Mazzy here. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People hate when I do this, but I always say that. Maybe I love know. it. I'm, yeah. I'm the only one that loves Joey it. Joey Callio, the bass player, mostly from Dada, right. who's on tour now. I think they have three more shows on this reunion tour. How's it been? I'm kind of blown away. It's been great, actually. Yeah, we saw him at the opening uh, in Seattle. It was crazy good. Uh, but thank you for uh, doing this. What we're doing, literally this October, uh, depending on when you're watching this, October 2024 is the 70th anniversary of the Fender Stratocaster guitar. Now, this is the 50th anniversary book uh, that was given to me for a 50th birthday. I'm turning 70 this year too. I'm turning, I'm two months older than the Stratocaster guitar. Oh so god. we're, I know, oh my God, right? <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna just do a very loose hangout talking about strats. We're gonna show a shitload of record covers with strats on them. Now, it's not complete. There are certain artists, we don't have Eddie Van Halen here. I know we did custom shit later. There's a lot of things we're missing. So in the comments, please. Uh, join in, but we're going to talk. We each have, do you have more than one Strat or just one Strat? I only have one Strat. Okay, I only have one Strat, yeah. but let's talk about that a little bit. But this is a cool book. I My guess is uh, someone put out a 70th anniversary or an updated version of this because it's all about the Strat, and we know how things have changed over the years uh, with electric guitars, and there's editions, signature editions of every friggin' artist who ever played a uh, Strat who's known. But that's kind of cool. But um, tell me about your Strat first. Show it and uh, let's talk about it. Then we're gonna just hang out and talk about Strat. We're, we are not guitar experts. experts. So go to other channels to learn the history of the Strat and details of the workings of Strats. I'm gonna turn it down so the Strat doesn't spank me. It's nice to have that little buzz in the background though. Yeah. <laughs> You like it. You love it until you're recording with it. Exactly. <laughs> so what, what is that strap? This is a uh, what they call a custom shop, which is uh, a, a division of the Fender Corporation um, that they started. Uh, they started up because, long story short, Fender started kind of getting a little wonky after CBS bought them, and that was uh, like sixty five. Sixty five, and um, they. They started making them in Japan, and uh, they licensed, uh, they kind of started a whole company, Fender did, in Japan, and uh, those guys were turning out guitars that were kind of kicking ass on the American-made ones, so they decided, okay, I get it, and we need to get back to, you know, the the roots, the roots of uh, what a Stratocaster was, and why why is everybody buying, you know, the pre-CBS Stratocasters? Because they were way better than what was happening in the 70s. 70s were like the the dead era for okay. uh, Fenders, okay. basically. And not, we're not talking about Jerry Garcia. Dead no, era, not, the, not that. Although, did he even, did he play Strat? Well, I think he did at one point, but then he had that custom, he had guitars made for him. And right. We're not, ex I'm not an expert. We're not getting into the comparisons. But uh, all I remember, uh, as a kid, I'm the age of, uh, well, Again, I'm literally the age two months older than a Stratocaster, but Leo Fender, uh, Fender at the time was in Fullerton, California. And I remember, or at least they w moved there. He was an electronics, Leo Fender. 
And I think the guitar that really kind of got him in the uh, uh, known was he invented what we know as the Telecaster, the Broadcaster. And he got sued. They got sued because he couldn't use the Broadcaster by name. It was by yeah. Gretsch. Yeah. And he changed it to the Telecaster. And it was a really heavy, you know. You see that in a lot of country artists. And I love a telly. I mean, rock artists too, definitely, you know. So many great people use a telly. I'm a big fan of the telly. I love. I have more tellies than I have strings. I don't. I just sold my George Harrison telly, mm -hmm. but because mm -hmm. I don't really play that much. But I digress. So uh, 1952 to 54, I, you know, he invented the, the group invented this. The name was from sort of the space age era, the Strat. And by the way, for this video, I'm wearing the Stetson Stratoliner hat that came about about when people were flying business. You know, gentlemen would wear suits and coats and ties and wear this. This was designed by uh, Stetson out of Texas. They don't only make cowboy hats. This is a Stratoliner. So it's kind of that space age thing from the 50, 40s, 50s, into the 60s, obviously. Everything's a Strato something. Strato, yeah. st Strato, yeah. like strap-on yeah. type of thing. Exactly. So Joey's yeah. gonna talk about how this was sort of uh, created, why this is created. Mine, by the way, is a 1992 American Strat. My first Strat, see, my bar mitzvah was given a used 1962 uh, blonde jazz master. And this is 1967, end of the summer of love, right? And my parents got it because they knew someone owned a pawn shop. So it was a, what, at that point, it was like a four-year-old guitar. But as cool as it was, and I played it for a number of years into the 70s, it wasn't a hip guitar in Northern California. The Jazz Masters, Jaguars, we, we considered them surf guitars. The Beach Boys were kind sure. of passe to us. The Safaris, the Beach Boys, everything. And, it, and, and my parents did well, and I can't, you know, I, I didn't show my disappointment, but I played that guitar. Yeah for four or five years until I sold it in the early 70s. I bought my first Strat, which I don't even know what year it was. My guess it's anywhere from a 69 to 71 uh, Sunburst Strat. And I had that for about a decade and then I sold it. And Michelle gave me this um, in 92. Our son was born in 90 and this was a gift. And she picked out the color in American Strat. I love this guitar. So that's my uh, Strat thing happening okay i'll go back i'll finish up on this this so this is a strat uh th what they were doing in the uh, custom shop was uh recreating the best of the best eras okay so it's, this is a 61 and it has what they call a slab side rosewood sure. neck slab uh very hip people want the slab side i don't know why they want that. the other one's just thinner but it looks cooler it's chunkier maybe some people think it plays better but um Anyway, so speaking of giving a gift, a gift guitar, this was gifted to me from a friend of mine that I've known since fifth grade. We were the troublemakers, Rob Woodruff. And uh, he gave me this, he's given me a couple guitars actually. And uh, this thing is <laughs> no joke. This is a so incredible people, yeah, guitar. Really, look at that. Yeah, it's... Uh, so this is a copy of a 61. When was exactly. This from the, when did the custom shop make this? Do you well, know? they started in the uh, mid to late 80s. So it's... I don't know when this was made, and uh, actually, it's probably, this was made more like in the uh, 90s or early 2000s, I think. Uh, what happened was, is, you know, even with these custom ones, you can order sp special things. So somebody ordered this, whatever, bird's eye or tiger stripe or whatever the hell that is, flame, some kind of uh, maple neck. That's not the standard maple, right? This is more the maple. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, with this kind of nice inlay. That's called a skunk stripe. There you go. See, that's a skunk stripe. That's uh, that's the uh, uh, the uh, 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 the pole that's in there that you can. I'm spacing on the name of it. It's a full maple net. Doesn't have the rosewood net. Right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mine, mine doesn't have that because they put the uh, uh, the thing that I spacing on the name of the it it's a truss rod. The truss rod is underneath the actual slab of uh, rosewood. So yours, they go in from the back. That's how they put the uh, uh, slab, uh, I mean the uh, truss rod in. Anyways, uh, so this guy ordered this and bailed. He didn't buy it. And so uh, my buddy Rob... Did you lose your deposit when you do that? I, he probably did. Okay. Um, but uh, he got it at on the cheap, quote unquote. I mean, now this guitar, they don't make it anymore. I've seen it anywhere between four and eight grand. So it's like, believe, I don't take this on the road. I, I don't even take it out of Seattle. Well, you're in Dada, you... 
primary you play bass, right? Yeah, okay. bass. I play bass, but I play acoustic guitar sometimes. Uh, on records, I play electric guitars and acoustic. But my electric stuff is all by, uh, you know, it's all the seven horse band. Well, talk about a little bit the contour mm -hmm. and the design because it, there's a cutaway here. Obviously, cutaway here so you can play higher on the neck, you know, this. Because that's after the Telecaster. Telecaster is a heavy friggin' guitar. Right. So, well, they, the, the whole design was, uh, uh, of this guitar comes from feedback from players. They, uh, when they made the, uh, the uh, telly, they gave them to a bunch of like hot shot players to check out and tour with and record with. And they loved them right away. They loved it right away. But uh, they didn't like the squared off side. So the, uh, on a Telecaster, there's none of this, uh, uh, you know, cutaway right for for body sculpting and I, I guess they whined about it it's funny because you know jeff beck never i don't think ever whined about it i mean people people love the way a, i guess you love it or you hate it uh, the way that that telly fits but yeah there's a lot of people that didn't like how it kind of you know stuck right Would there cut into them yeah, it, yeah. It, and you know, a they'd lot of people... These, they'd come home, <clears throat> they'd be on the road, the groupies would come to their hotel yeah. room, and they'd have this big mark right here. And their wife would want to know, what the hell is that? What so is that? They, It was a telly, so I needed swear to, to help. God, it wasn't... <laughs> um, so, yeah, the main cutaway thing is is right here for your, you know, gut or whatever. Maybe that was the thing. They started drinking a lot of beer. And then this right here is cutaway for your arm. So it's like comfort cutaways is what wow. they are. Stratocaster. Stratocaster. On the cover. Uh, there's a couple little uh, things where I bent the rules that's inside because I wanted to show you that artist. You bent rules? I totally yeah. always bend the rules. And I'm going not in, uh, somewhat in chron chron chronological order by the artist. And it's not exact, so I don't bust my balls on that. But I do want to show... The guy who got the like one of the first strats in 1954, and by even me mentioning that, if you don't know who this artist is, you don't deserve to be watching this video or listening to rock and roll. And that is uh, this guy, the, the the goofy guy with the glasses. Uh, this is Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly, yeah. And this is the crickets, and look at that. That's kind of close to the strat you're holding. Oh, typical, it started with a sunburst finish. Well, they had, they had, they had sunburst and, um, damn, what was it, black or white? I think uh, it was white. I have no sunburst idea. Sunburst and white, I think. It was something like that. They only had two choices at first. And this is the original sunburst. It's the yellow to black, not the yellow to red to black. You know what I, I just read or heard on YouTube? That the, the strats didn't sell that well at to first. To begin with? They sold less than the Telecasters, and then that guy goes on the Ed Sullivan show, and boop, just it switched. There we go. Like, look at that. That is how things are made. It's very much like uh, Rickenbacker gives a guitar to George Harrison, the Gretsch uh, Ringo's Ludwig set, um, the Epiphone Casino, uh, but the Rickenbackers, Rickenbackers, excuse me. Uh, the little black guitar that John Lennon uh, played on the Ed Sullivan show, the Hoffner bass. I mean, that that's why signature are so important right. to, to these companies these days. But this wasn't a thing. He probably got, you know, they gave him one of the first out of the box or out of the, you know, plant guitars and Buddy Holly, it's all history there. So um, look at that, look at that beautiful guitar. Plus the guy goes on and plays like, you know, Peggy Sue and like just songs that were like gonna be forever classics. So that didn't hurt. Yeah. So, I mean, th these kind of books are invaluable. Like book. Yeah, it was a gift. I mean, yeah. no one has given me a 70th updated on this yet. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> but that. anyway, that the Chirping there. Crickets. Um, this is a great, this is Analog mm -hmm. Productions. They did two, two uh, great Buddy Holly record. Wonderful record, wonderful record. Another one, now, this one, unfortunately, you don't see the whole guitar. Um, so, but I know, oh, in the back you do, Richie Valens. If you know who Richie Valens, La Bamba, of course, uh, was his big thing. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. I like Donna. Yeah. Uh, what a great, this, is, this was on a Delphi uh, record, Delphi record label. Come on, let's go. Donna yeah. La Bamba. I mean, Boney Maroney. What a great, great artist. Uh, but he played it too. I mean, that was... Kind of the rock and roll guitar then for a while. Another thing, and I don't have it here. It's funny. I don't. I couldn't find a Beach Boys album 
there are some with uh, the Strat on it, but I don't have any. And as I said, the Beach Boys used a lot of, they did the Fender bass and they played them um, with Jaguar Jazz Masters mostly, but there are a couple of covers which I don't have uh, playing. I don't know if it was Dennis playing, a, a, no, Dennis is the drummer. Um, if it was uh, Carl playing a Strat, I don't know. So, uh, but anyway, here is the Safaris. You know the Safaris? <laughs> Okay, everyone my generation, every band, and anybody, I started playing the drums before I played it, played guitar, and the thing we all learn is Wipeout, <laughs> and Wipeout by the Safaris. On here is Walkin', it, this is basically, oh, Surfer Joe was the B-side of the single. I never had this album at the time, but there's a nice red, uh, look at that reddish kind of orange, depending on the cover photo, if it if it faded or not, but you that beautiful, uh, Strat there, so the Safaris, early '60s, great on the surf. They only so when Strat started, there was only two, and I can't. Remember, I know it's Sunburst, and it's either white or black. It's probably white, but uh, the people at the factory, uh, they decided, uh, well, we're gonna try some custom colors, and I guess the people like the the bean counter set saw a red Strat and said, "Who wants a red guitar?" Look at the guitars now. When I look at some of the guitars, some of the guitars are shit ass ugly from my point of view. And uh, you know, I I'm sorry, but there, there's a. When I got my Jazz Master, uh, even though it was like a three or four year old used guitar, it was pristine. And I was playing once, and I walked. It, the lights were really dark. When my, this is basically a a junior high school or high school, early high school teen club dance, and our band was playing. And they walked down the stairs off the stage, and I slipped hit the side and it put a nick in the, my jazz master. I was crushed. Now you fucking buy guitars that are pre nicked Hello. Yeah, exactly. It like, makes I, it worth more. I, I couldn't believe that that was a thing, that yeah. that's become a thing. What you get is a little bit more kind of out of the box playability. A lot of like guitars or like all the edges, like all the frets are kind of sharp and they don't play as well as they're going to in 10 years, right? So you get all the, they, they sand so it down. So it's seasoned in a way. Absolutely okay. seasoned. I'm going to start saying Seasoned that. and patinaed, pre-patinaed. Okay, the British Invasion, there were probably others, but I was pulling from my collection, obviously the Beatles, and we'll talk about that in a bit. They didn't get a Strat till 1965, which is a weird story, and I'll get into that later, but the Dave Clark Five, there you go. Look at that. There's Lovely one Strat Dave on that. Five. You know, so they came out, you know, they were like the band after the Beatles that be, that was on Ed Sullivan and, you know, gave the Beatles a run for the money. Not really, but they were big. They were a great singles band. Um, I like it like that, but look at that Strat. Kind of cool. that bass, too. Right. Killing. I mean, the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Looking at these bands and what they had, everything. Mike Smith, he really got screwed by um, Mr. Clark. Sorry about that. Now, the guy that played a Strat a lot, uh, once he went electric, is Bob Dylan. Of course, there are live records later, but I didn't find many right here. But obviously, there's him on the Strat, Highway 61, Revisited. Uh, arguably one of the best uh, 60s singles, like a Rolling Stone on there. But of course, he had Mike Bloomfield playing on there, and um, who probably wasn't playing a Strat. I don't remember what Bloomfield was playing. Uh, but um, what sure. what a great look at that! Just just the partial shot of that is so friggin'. Cool. I mean, when you say that that the when he comes out playing the Strat, that's probably the biggest he heads explode around the world moment with a guy playing a Strat. Yeah. Just as far as like what, why, and people, from folk music yeah. to oh god, it was so cool. I mean, there's plenty of footage him playing a Strat and plenty of photographs playing a Strat. But on this, this is the uh, Budokan. This is 19, this goes later, 78. So I'm out of order, but I'm keeping the same artist together. But look at that. I mean, you don't, you see the back of it, but that's definitely a Strat. This is basically, people call this period his Vegas period, where he had uh, like background singers and- See how there's no, is, there's no skunk stripe, right? So that means he's got a, uh, he's got a uh, rosewood. In 1965, um, when they're recording like Nowhere Man and uh, that period, they send out Mal Evans to the local, the local music shop in London, to get a couple. Go out and get a couple strats. I love that. Get a couple strats. So he comes back with matching blue. It was like a a pair of blue Stratocat Stratocat guitars, blue, right? The the I think it's the 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 uh, lighter one. You know, no, no, Daphne blue. Daphne it was, blue. It was kind of a very pale yeah, blue. Yeah, Daphne. Blue. And unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. I got rid of that one too. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, the Rocky copy, and we'll talk about that. 
But he brings it back, and so uh, George and John get the Stratocasters. But what happened was, after 65, we go into 66, 67, George Harrison takes his Strat and paints it up. Look at that. And that was nicknamed Rocky. Uh, Fender has put out various editions. One, a very limited custom shop edition for twenty-five grand. Another one for twenty-six hundred. That's the one I had, and I sold it recently. Um, I think I almost I didn't quite double my money, but I just wasn't playing. It's a beautiful collector's piece, but where I am right now. But he painted this with uh, nail polish from his from Patty, uh, his wife, as well as Daglo paints. Daglo paints were a new thing then, so. Obviously, it's all over a magical mystery tour. He plays it in All You Need Is Love, if you've seen that video. He painted it himself, right? He painted it himself. Do you think he was on acid when he did it? I mean, because it's totally, definitely a, a nod to being psychedelic. Well, it, I think it's just the idea. I, I don't think he was on acid as much as some of the other guys in terms of that. But he was, the Indian thing was happening. Right. and uh, Spirituality. You know, music, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, in fact, Ravi Shankar was always upset that every time you'd see people you know, smoking pot in movies and things, they'd always stick sitar music in. <laughs> Why did you put sitar music? This is not a drug music, you know. He didn't like that. Um, and, seriously, and it, but it became a thing. You listen to look at movies like I Love You, Alice B. Toklas. Everything about psychedelia, there's sitar music. All all of a sudden, everyone's whacked out, uh, tripping or smoking pot. Another one that I really like, and this is a great album. We'll talk a little bit of the music, but um, Buddy Guy. I mean, Buddy Guy's using so many guitars, but uh, look at this is like he has your Strat. This is yeah. a great live at the Fillmore in San Francisco. Buddy Guy, uh, Man of the Blues, and Buddy Guy, one of the great guitar players there. And there, this is a, a craft reissue, fantastic sounding record. Now, of course, there's so many directions I could have gone here with Jimi Hendrix. And um, Jimi Hendrix there. Now this is the famous, this is an amazing story. I mean, uh, Jim Marshall, the photographer, took this series of photographs. This is at Monterey. And the thing about Jimmy, I always get this backwards. He bought right-handed guitars. Turned them over and then strung them for a left-handed. So the E, the low E is still on the bottom, but it's where the high E was. So that means you gotta change the nut and the bridge. But look at that, look at him burning that guitar. That, I get it, you know, him and Pete Townsend both at Monterey. Can you imagine, I don't remember the order, but can you imagine like the Who going on and the Who were fantastic if you watched that Monterey Pop Festival video and he smashed it, but having to go on after Jimi Hendrix, again, I don't remember the order, but um, of course, one of the great, uh, great Strat players, great Strat things. Probably the greatest Strat player. Yeah, yeah look at that. I mean, come on. Greatest look at that. Player. Look at that. This is the first solo record by Eric Clapton with Delaney and Bonnie on it and Leon Russell and Jim Gordon. This is a, an amazing record. Uh, it's kind of a blue-eyed, soulful rock record. I love Delaney and Bonnie, I've showcased this. But this is when uh, you know he was also using the Strat. Now, some people, when I saw Cream do the reunion show in 2005 at the Royal Albert Hall, he was playing Blackie, I believe. He played his Strat, which we'll talk about in a minute. but. Cream Day, he played an SG. And a lot of people in that 2005 uh, show were disappointed because they were about probably a third slower, the way they played everything slower. They're older guys. And he used that instead of the SG. So it had a different sound for Cream. He's all in on strats now. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, Blackie was the most famous one. Um, um, this is Blackie, okay? This is one literally. I know you know about that. I'm not even going to ask you if you know about that. I don't know the details. All I know is Cocaine is on this album and <laughs> literally literally the song <laughs> written by J.J. Kale. There's Blackie. Uh, obviously Fender's done a Blackie's edition. So what, tell us about that. So he bought, I can't remember who he bought them for. He bought six guitars, six strats. He gave three away, okay? And then he took the other three and took the best parts of, and I just found this out, the best parts of those three and then made Blackie. So that's actually three different guitars that he bought. He put the neck, you know, from one and the body from another and came up with that. So that's, like, some people would call that a Frankenstrat, but it's not really, that's, you know, it's, the, yeah, Frankenstrat yeah, is totally. when you just take in all different parts, but usually it looks a little funny. That does not look funny. It looks killer. And of course. I want that one. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know if he still has this. You know, he did this whole thing for Crossroads, which is, as much as I like to tease about certain things about Clapton, I really like this period of Eric Clapton. And I admire that he started this uh, Crossroads, kind of a rehab center. And they, he's every once in a while, he's, he's sold guitars to fund it. So I, you can't knock that, you know. But uh, this is a drug-fueled album. But look at that. Did he play, when he was playing like with the Yardbirds and stuff, he wasn't playing straps, was he? Or maybe, I don't remember that. <sighs> I think he, I was, I'm gonna, gonna guess he's playing telecast. Someone's gonna tell us. Yeah. Well, look at on the back here, you got um, SG there. But this is, as I recall, this is the only album with him on the cover with, with a strap. strap. Yeah. Because he has the SG. Well, he says Les Paul. Paul. Les, 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 Les Paul. Paul. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Les Paul. Les Paul. I don't know when he started. I, I, I'm guessing he was playing a Telecaster. I'm pretty sure he was back in the Yardbirds. I mean, what a, I've seen him twice now. That guy is, a, he is a sick guitar player. Pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I did want to show another Beatles stuff, but there really aren't a lot of Beatle albums with Stratocasters, at least on the cover back. So I um, am bending the rules a little bit for because it's my channel and my vi video uh, oh, idea. And your birthday, right? This is all the, part of that. It, leading up, my birthday is August 23rd on the same year, the same date as uh, a drummer, ironically, uh, Keith Moon. We share the birthday together. Uh, you should have given me a rim, rim shot there. I'm too far away from that. <laughs> okay. Look at this. This is a photograph Annie Leibovitz took. This is the day uh, John died. Are you kidding me? You know the nude shot of John and Yoko? Yeah, that they're naked. Or he's naked. and, and that was yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was shot the afternoon that he died. Oh, uh, I don't Annie Lee Butch showed up at the Dakota. I don't know that. Because um, Double Fantasy had just come out two months earlier, and this was a feature they were going to do. But there was one of the pictures of him with his a reddish strat. Unfortunately, it's a little... Uh, you don't see the whole thing here. But um, they had strats. You can see McCartney playing strats. But as far as I know... There are no album covers, and I looked through my collection. There are no album covers with McCartney playing Strats. Now, one of the great Strat players is David Gilmore, too, obviously, Pink Floyd. I couldn't find any <clears throat> shots of him. Now, there are definitely photographs of him, but I want this to be album covers. So, you got this, okay? There is a Strat right there. So, small... But it's a fucking strat, okay? So you happy now? Guma Guma? He is a, uh, a I mean, the thing about <clears throat> any guitar, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> but especially strat, it's you kind of got to find your your tone on this guitar. And there's a lot of options. You, When David Gilmore plays a strat, you, it takes you, um, you know, two seconds or less to know that's David Gilmore. Because he, de I mean, it's like Hendrix. You know in a second who it is. It's not about... You know, it's about the person finding their place in the strap. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to do that. By the now, way. Frank Zappa played a lot. I couldn't find a photograph on an album cover. Maybe there are later, but he was playing, uh, you know, Les Pauls and all those SGs. Things. SGs. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, I get the S Paul. Aren't they the same guitar? <laughs> no. Okay. You're the musician. I'm just the. I mean, they're amateur. close. They're you know. Close. Th by the way, there was is an SG shaped guitar. The first. One was called a Les Paul, so you're not half okay. wrong. You know, isn't it a coincidence that like Les Paul would play Les Paul? It's kind of like Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> it's amazing that he got Lou Gehrig's disease. I wouldn't compare it to that, but okay. okay. Now, this is an illustration. I'm assuming that's a Strat. This is, this is uh, Ruben and the Jets. This is the Mother's Doo-Wop album. I saw a Winterland show where Ruben and the Jets opened up for the Mothers, which was kind of cool, mm -hmm. so... He's a part of that. But, you know, is that cheating? It's not, there's no cheating. This is enjoyment. This is just a hangout talking about straps. 70 years. This is not a college-level course. There will be no tests. Or will there? Oh, yeah. There might. Now, there you go. Okay. One of my favorite strat sounds has always been, I don't know what it is, but the way Steve Miller gets his strat sound through a twin reverb. There's a certain Christmas... I don't want to. Say, I want to say twangy. I don't know what the other word is. It's a great sound. A strat through a twin reverb in the right circumstance sounds amazing. Now, I prefer the first five albums of of Steve Miller Band, okay. El Capital, but you know, with with uh, the Joker and uh, Fly Like an Eagle, he, he he became massive. All the power 
Uh, and actually, but look at that. That's like a blacky type thing. Now, he also reversed. Yeah, on that. Unless it's a reverse picture, photograph. No, because flopped. they, they no? can only make it right and left-handed. They can't flip it upside down. Oh, right, down. right, of course. So he's... He's a Hendrix. That's he, a Hendrix movie. He, he's like... I think he's a good guitar player, actually. He's a great guitar player. Yeah. Very influenced. Again, his, mm -hmm. I think is either a godfather or was Les Paul, I think. Wow. Or, or cool. taught him things early on. He knew Les Paul, and he was very influenced by Les Paul. But, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of... Play Strat. Now, one of my favorite people... Look at this. Oh, yeah, that's your guy. Ry Cooter, my favorite guitar player. Mm -hmm. Not that he's, like, the best guitar... He, he, He's the greatest string instrument player. He can play mandolin and guitar and every kind of string instrument. He does a very, he's very innovative. This is probably one of his purest rock and roll type records. This is considered the first digital recorded oh, that's right. um, uh, rock record. I remember that. Supposedly. Yeah. Um, interesting story about this. He was uh, in the, a band with Captain Beefheart, in the Captain Beefheart band. On, he's on the first record. When they got that contract or that uh, deal, they didn't have a lot of great instruments. You know how bands in those days, uh, you know, they could hardly buy their instruments. Exactly. So, so the label gave him money to go down to to Fender, the Fender warehouse, and pick a guitar out. Can you imagine? Hey, we're gonna. Of course, it everything as you know in the record business, it comes out of it's your advance. Yeah, you're It'll come for out of your future. You don't royalties. know, but you're paying. Yeah, you don't know what you're paying mm -hmm. for. So he goes down there and he picks out this Strat, this exact Strat. He takes it to an auto body shop because uh, Fender w weren't doing custom colors in those days. This is probably what sixty nine. Uh, 68, 69, something like they that. They were doing different colors, but not as many as they do now. Yeah, they and were they doing would, some different Unless colors. you had a shitload of money, they wouldn't yeah. say, hey, it was Joey, an it was an I want to do... Maybe they did. So he went to an auto body shop, and that's an auto body color. He's in the 50s cars and early 60s cars. And I just love that guitar. Well, that's what... Is that a Fiesta Red, your Strat? I don't even know the name. I think it might be a Fiesta. So that is a car color. They were actually using DuPont car colors. Yeah. Fiesta Red is a, is a car color and I, I can't remember the other ones but they're there so they were totally into the car colors so that's a cool story and this is a kind of fun record uh they open up a little sister a song elvis presley made famous and what a great band on i mean here. his influence if you're into the stones then you should know his influence on the stones is massive well on keith richards playing and you know he's the one that like i am a big fan of his slide guitar playing exactly. he's like the king of that and he influenced a lot of people. He's the one that taught uh, Keith Richard and George Harrison how to use a slide initially. Uh, uh, he's on Baker's Banquet, and that's where the slide comes in. He plays on that record. And um, George Harrison from him as well. He also, uh, the other person, which I don't have because I can't find any pictures of him, is Lowell George around the same time. Lowell George with Little Feet, another slide player. And ironically, on that first uh the first debut by Little Feet, there's a song called Willin, which they've done, well, three times, including the light on. They've done it twice. Big song. Yeah, Lowell George, like, busts his hand or fucks up his hand, so Ry Cooter's playing the bottleneck on Willin on that first album. Uh, but uh, Lowell George and uh, Ry Cooter, two great uh, bottleneck players there. Now, this is a fun album, and I just love it because uh, look at this cover. We're talking about red again, right? Is that the same red? Looks like it. It looks like very similar to mine. Yeah, Fiesta Red. We didn't even talk about the you know the whole thing of Strats was three pickups. Did we even mention that? No, we didn't. We we can though. No, I you, mean, what they, is what is the deal about the three pickup thing and the switches and and customizing and all? I don't understand. I mean, I understand it, but people really are into rewiring the guitars to make the pickups different configurations, right? Right, but that happened later. The okay. first thing was just you know, hey, if if. If uh, one's good, two's better, then three's got to be better than two. I think that's kind of just the idea. They were, he, uh, uh, Fender was just looking for a more flexible guitar for guitar players. He's trying to just help guitar, you know, that was the angle. It's like, what's, what would a guitar player want? And more tones out of one guitar would be a thing. Back then, uh, uh, there's three pickups and one's, you know, tilted like that. So uh, uh, you get the uh, high string needs a little bit more juice down there. And that's the lead. You, are you hip to the, like the back, the bridge is sort of the, the lead pickup, this one back here. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, this is the bridge pickup. That's the neck pickup and that's the middle pickup. 
Um, so the uh, the bridge pickup is what most people would c would consider the lead pickup, and it's because it's more bright. Things it's brighter. It's brighter down there, yeah. and so you, it pops through. But back in the early days with Strats, they were all the same pickup. <laughs> it was just like a bucket of pickups. They weren't like, oh, this is the this is better for the middle. Like nowadays, people started getting into the or in, in, during the modern times, people did start kind of rewiring like what you're talking about to make something like uh, uh, the neck pickup a little beefier too, because that does have a it's like a warmer tone, almost like you get a little closer to like I'm not going to say it sounds like a Les Paul, but you get a little closer to that kind of tone. Yeah, um, he's. God, that guy's, he's amazing. He's great. I really, really like him. This album is fantastic. Uh, Joe Walsh is on this record. Um, Sick. Edgar Winter is on this record. Uh, Joe Vitale on, I guess, percussion. Bobby Caldwell on drums. Um, this is a good kind of rock, just a rock and roll pop record. Uh, the two songs they got a lot of airplay, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. Huge. Huge record. And also Teenage, oh, Teenage Love Affair, is it? No. That's that's not on. This that's one. not on this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. is it? Teenage love. Affair. It is on there. Teenage love. It's almost like a poppy old yeah. retro song, it's but true. it's so great. I mean, I love this record. I mean, this is one I kept from the seventies. But he, you know who he looks like there? He looks like Susie Quattro. Totally does. <laughs> well, or she looks like him. Yeah, exactly. I, and that's like this is so androgynous, Su Susie Quattro. That's what that um, was the thing. Yeah, in that year, he, he, 70, his... 1973, Okay. So right around then, it might be just before that, when he goes out with uh, Johnny Winter. Him and Johnny Winter on right. that Johnny Winter's and live record. I mean, it's a sloppy record, granted. But man, those guys are like assassins on guitar at that point. Just shredding. And he's like 18, and of course they're all on heroin, which is, you know, fantastic. A personal mm -hmm. favorite of mine is Niels Lofgren. Now, now most people know Niels Lofgren because he's been a member for, God, 30 years now of the E Street Band. But him and his brother had a band called Grin uh, mm -hmm. that was on a CBS offshoot. And they, they had a couple of songs, Ain't Love Nice or something, uh, which is pretty good. But he's a me. I saw him live in the 70s. He's the one that almost at AM Records just quite didn't push him they over. They didn't know what to do with him. Well, the thing is, great guitar player, short guy. He used to do backflips on the stage playing guitar. Like, I don't Silly stuff. That. No, he's, he had a, he's had hip replacements, mm -hmm. but look at that. Cry tough, and the one just before this, I'm blanking out the name. The one that do Keith don't go uh, homage to the Glimmer Twins, uh, and uh, going back the uh, Carol King song that the Birds did also. Great record. This find an A and M. Uh, this is an A and M original. Find a version of this. This is a fabulous sounding record. We're talking about people like the test out their stare with rock and roll. This has a great vibe to it. Really well, Cry Tough. Um, love that, what a great player. But he would play this, he's one that doesn't really use a flat picks a lot. And You can tell by his hand yeah, right there. Yeah, right, you can yeah. tell that, look at that. But Niels Lofgren, a, a personal favorite of mine. I don't have a better picture, but uh, David Byrne played the uh, Strat a lot. Not in the beginning, because on here, He's playing acoustic guitar. This is the live, uh, the second live album, or the first live album. Uh, the name of the band is Talking Heads. But on the live thing, there's he's playing a strap. So it's a small picture, but for the sake of uh, entertainment value, you got David Byrne with the Talking Heads. Again, what's, what's interesting is, remember I said how the Jazz Messer and Jaguar, when I got mine in 67, it wasn't a cool, cool guitar. Right. So, 10 years later, cut 10 years later, all those guitars were cheap ass. So bands like, like television, like uh, you know, well Elvis Costello, uh, Elvis sure, Costello yeah. uh, was a jag jazz master. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Marr didn't really start with the Jaguar, but he got the Jaguar. A lot of the punk bands, new wave bands, post punk bands would buy those uh, jazz masters and Jaguars because they were cheap. Now I was surprised I couldn't find a better picture. To me, one of my favorite. Talk about a great guitar player and bottleneck guitar yeah. player is Bonnie Raitt. Now, she's holding the, the Strat there, and this was like a really uh, breakout when she went to Capitol, but she has like five amazing records, or five or six, on Reprise Warner Brothers records, and she's playing really great kind of poppy, but more bluesy stuff. Great bottleneck, I've seen her live because she lives in the Bay Area so many times. Great guitar player, doesn't get a lot of, as much love there, Unfortunately, it's on her side here, but there are pictures. Again, I wanted to make sure it was on an album cover. Look at this guy. 
His is a 62. This is a six. The one I have is a 61 copy. That's an actual 62. It does have a slab, slab board. You know, I saw him once as an opener, and I can't remember the show it was. So I wasn't as invested in him. I wish I'd paid more attention. I mean, he was great, but um, I mean, he, he just really flew. Unfortunately, you know, died way too young, tragically. But uh, what a great guitar player. And his brother, and Jimmy Vaughn. Good. You know, I don't have any yeah. Jimmy Vaughn record. Now, a lot of these other artists I have on CDs, but for this video, I didn't want to pull CDs. So uh, Jimmy Vaughn, who's still alive, playing great music. And of course, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan. You know who's into Stevie Ray Vaughan? Like 10 tenths is Mike Gurley of Dada, who's a big Strat. He's he basically, that's his main guitar, is a Strat. You know, this is probably not well planned because I don't want to end with the edge. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with the edge? I'm I'm fine. Yeah. You know. Now he has a very he's a unique player too. He's sure. one of those guys like Johnny Marr. Not that they sound together, but play this kind of rhythmy lead hybrid thing. Is that what do you call it? I don't even know. Is there a name for it? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, but uh, his whole thing it was about echo. I mean, he his use of echo and like, loops and things. Well, dotted note echo. That's his. That's his signature oh, sound. Okay. It's a dotted note. Echo. I might have to. I might have to be arrested here because he's playing a telly here. So maybe this is not a strat. So, but see. I know he plays. Is that a strat? It looks like a strat. It is a strat. Okay. You can tell by the. Oh wait a second. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. It is. See that? It's got the horn. It looks like it has it's got the, the horn. horn. Yeah, it does. Okay. It the so horn. we traded for the inside shot in the studio. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this guy's probably got about 300 guitars. Of course, I mean, of I'm course. sorry to tell you that. So, any other, uh, like, 70 friggin' years. I can't believe I'm turning 70. And I am i can't believe I'm older than a Stratocaster guitar. Well, they were making them before. That's just, you know, the production date. They had you beat at the factory. Yeah, they were, it was being developed 52 to 54, and they uh, released it 54, so... Thanks for watching, everybody.